Hello and welcome to the National Brain and Bills Brain Box Quiz. I'm glad you've been able to join us. Um, I can see we've got a few people who are already online and viewing, so um, we're off to a good start. I can see plenty of chats going on as well in the channel. So we will begin relatively shortly, but first I'm going to get some of the logistics out of the way, kind of introduce what this is all about. So firstly, my name is Dan. I am a National Brain Pill volunteer and I am tonight's quiz host. Yes, I drew the short straw. So what have I let myself in for? I do not know. So we have a fun pack quiz. I can assure you of that. I do know that much. It is rather doctor hospital related uh, and you'll see lots of fun kind of throughout. We're going to have about 33 questions, 12 picture questions, and it's 51 points in total. So those numbers are completely random and don't know why, but that's what we're going with. So hopefully it's going to be a good, good laugh. Now I'm sat here on my own in a room talking directly to a camera. I've got a good setup, and I, but I'm on my own. So I really need you all to be using the chat, which should be over here somewhere. That will keep me company. I can see it. I can then try and engage with you at various places as well. So please do use that chat so I can keep up with how well everybody's doing. Great. Um, first off, um, we do have uh, a pitch around that has uh, begun. I'll explain a little bit more about that shortly, but you may have seen the link. If you've seen the link, uh, have a look in the description below, uh, but I'll get to that in, in a second. So this is a quiz. Uh, obviously, we're on YouTube Live, so I can't see anybody else, so I can't hear you shouting out your answers. Um, try not to comment the answers in, in the chat because that will give it away for everybody else. So try your best to, to hold that back if you can. Um, so you're going to write your own questions. You need a pen and paper, and you can write your own answers, not write your own questions. That would make this quiz pointless. Write your own answers to uh, the questions on, on your pen and paper. If you are in a team playing against teams, so hopefully you may have challenged some family, you may have challenged you know, your neighbours or your friends and having a little bit of friendly competition going on as well. You might have a separate uh, Zoom uh, kind of conversation going on, on the side. Make sure you mute if you do, you don't want to give any answers away. Uh, that's great as well. Let us know how, how you get on. Um, the first thing first, whether you're on your own, in a team, just as a couple, um, team names. We need to have a team name first. That's the first step of any quiz and it's essential that you all have your team name. So again, pop your team names in the chat. I keep looking at it that way. And um, cause this is actually quite important because wait for it, there is a prize for the best team name. So the best team name will win a 10 pound Waterstone voucher and a goodie bag from National Brain Appeal. Woo, I can't hear you all shout because yeah, on my own. Um, but I'm sure you're as excited as I try to get us all then. So that is what is up for grabs. So please do put your team names in the channel. Um, uh, great. And I can see that we're getting chats in already. So I'm assuming this is all going well. We, we might have technical difficulties. If you do, please let me know. You might see some kids hanging out behind me in the window trying to be annoying. Let me know and I'll quickly get rid of them. The doorbell goes. I'll have to run out and get that, but you know, usual kind of digital technical CTs might happen, but we'll try our best. We've had a practice runs. Our fingers crossed, I think we're gonna be good. Cool. So um, there are lots of surprises on the way. There is another prize as well that I'll mention at the halfway stage. I do stay and change, an even bigger and better prize. We've got some celebrities taking part too, and um, and yeah, it's gonna be fun. I think I've covered all the necessities uh, other than make sure you have yourself a drink. There will be a halftime uh, break um, for about 15 minutes or so, so you can um, top up your drinks there. Uh, I think it's gonna last about an hour and a half in total, depending on how much I decide to waffle on in between questions. So I'll try to keep that limited because I appreciate you are all giving up your time for this great cause. Um, I hope it's a bit of fun as well. And it is probably the hottest day. Uh, we picked a good one for that. So um, thank you very much for, for staying in uh, to do it. Um, I can see some team names coming in already. We've got buy one, get one free, good. We've got Pete's Dragon. Uh, we've got, which is actually from my aunt. Uh, yes, my aunt and my mum are on this chat as well, so I'm sure they'll be embarrassing me throughout. Um, what we've got? We've got Andrew's Angels. Uh, my mum has said, love you, Dan. Thanks, thanks, mum. Uh, we've got Captain Green. Uh, the Tipsy Tarts. That seems to be an early, an early winner for me. Um, I've got to say, I will be the judge of this, so um, that, is, that is key. Um, just in case you can gather my personality already, what I'm going to enjoy in a team name. Um, 
So before we do do begin, just a little reminder of why we're all here and what this is really all about. So I'm gonna to cut to a video to someone who can explain it a little bit better than myself. Over to uh, actor and huge supporter of National Brain Appeal, um, Steve Mangan to introduce. Oh, no, that's not the right link. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for the uh, Brain Box Quiz. I hope you're enjoying the evening. Um, tonight's quiz is hosted by the National Brain Appeal, uh, who raise funds for uh, advanced treatment and research at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery and the Institute of Neurology, together, thankfully, simply known as Queen Square. All donations tonight will go towards finding new treatments and cures for neurology and neuromuscular conditions. And if you haven't already, we are suggesting, if you can afford it, a five pound donation. But please, if you want to give loads more than that, please feel free. But enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, this is for a wonderful cause, and I've seen firsthand some of the amazing things that you can do working with National Brain Appeal for a while now. And so the donate link is down here. I've got the angles right as well. I'll keep this up. You see it on the screen throughout. It's in the description below. Please, 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 please do um, donate what you can. Um, we will really appreciate it. Um, I think we've suggested a, uh, a small donation for entry, but give what you can. Maybe challenge your friends to that competition, I said. Maybe the loser pays everyone's, I don't know. Maybe you can find other ways of uh, raising even more money for this great cause. I will try and give you updates as well of how, of how we're doing. I know we made a good start even before we'd begun. We were around £500 before we'd even started, so that is a great, but we need to raise as much cash as we can. So please, please do give generously if you can. Okay, let's let's move on with proceedings because you're bored of hearing me talk now. So let's move on. So first off, we have a pitch around the brain tinglers. Okay, and this one um, it is in the link below, so you can see it in the description. But this is a kind of how they work. For those who aren't used to familiar to these sort of dingbat type questions, this is how they all work. So this one here is an example question. So we've got a white box and we've got the word blood pressure. And the word blood pressure is raised, is still considerably high in that box towards the top, one might say. Therefore, this one would be high blood pressure yeah see you get it clever isn't it so these are all we have 12 here and they're all to do kind of doctor hospital kind of related and hopefully um, some are hard i must admit some of these are quite tricky i had a lot of fun kind of trying to guess some of these myself uh, if you're used to this kind of way of thinking it's a little bit easier um, but they are um, some easier ones in there too so hopefully you can have fun and get a couple if you can get some of the harder ones i will do shout outs at the end so this is to be done throughout the quiz so we'll do the answers right at the very end. It'll be the last thing. It could be the thing that decides whether you win or lose against your friends. So this is important to do. So again, as I said, in the description, there's a link to download. Um, this is an image, which you can then have separately and you can do throughout the quiz. Again, there will be a break, so you have time to catch up then as well. Um, so yes, carry on um, with that. I hope that will make sense. If it doesn't make sense, comment, and I'm sure someone will answer or I'll, or I'll say it. See, loads more great names coming in. The spiders from Mars. Team Leggett here as well. We've got I Am Smarticus, clever, I like it. Team Hippocampus, oh, I like that one too, some clever people there. Cheap Night In, wow, it could be a Cheap Night In or it could be, depending on how much you donate. Um, and we've got the Brainiacs, okay, so we're getting some good names in, in there. I like that already, we're gonna have a tough choice later trying to pick. Let's move on to round one. So round one is Doctor, I Have a Serious Problem. So this is all to do with um, TV series uh, and related to that. So anyone who watches a lot of TV, you might have a bit of an advantage here. So round one, question one, it begins now. We all good. Dr. Gregory House probably has the worst bedside manner in the history of medicine. Who plays this irritable, irritable medic? Is it A, Stephen Fry, B, Hugh Laurie, or C, Robert Young? Okay, how do we do on that one? Give a bit of time. Question number two. Before Sandra O oh was in Killing Eve, as we all would have seen, I'm sure, she was saving lives in which TV drama? In which TV drama was she saving lives before? That obviously is a picture of her from that series. So anyone familiar with the hospital names of TV series? Might be a bit of a niche um, subject area there. I'm not sure if anyone that's done that mastermind before, but uh, there is a logo there on her jacket. That is a clue. There will be clues for out, some harder than others, some quite pointless. Okie dokie. Question three. Do let me know if I'm going too fast through some of these. 
Question three, what comedy sitcom from the 70s involved being a part of a mobile army surgical hospital? What comedy sitcom from the 70s involved being a part of a mobile army surgical hospital? Obviously the image there is of the cast and there is quite a big clue in the name. Okay, let's move on to question number four. And we have our first video question coming in from Stephen Mangan again. He's gonna ask this next question so I don't have to. So thank you, Stephen. So I'm gonna move on over now and see if you can get this one right. How long has the British TV series Casualty been running for? Is it A, 34 years, B, 30 years, or C, 25 years? Yes, that's right. How long has a British TV series casualty been running for? Is it A, 34 years, B, 30 years, or C, 25 years? Thank you, Stephen, for that. I've seen people commenting that they have donated, so that is much appreciated. Thank you very much for that. Do do keep that going. We want to get. I'll give some total updates as we go, and hopefully we hit a huge total to, to make a real difference. Okie dokie. Going to move on to question five. If you don't know the answer to that one, have a guess. It's that's what multiple choice is for. Have a guess. Question five. The character Doctor Jack Shepard is in which series? The character Dr. Jack Shepard is in which series? Again, a little bit of a clue in the picture. Have a look closely. Zoom in, maybe. Okay, we're getting people putting answers in the chat. Try to avoid that if you can. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question six. In the series Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, what was Dr. Quinn's first name? Was it A, Michaela, B, Medicine, or C, Madeline? So Quinn wasn't the first name, or Medicine, or Woman, as I've had answers before in the past. It's one of the three below. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question seven. Dr. Nicholas Riviera, MD, is a recurring character from which series? Is it A, Holby City, B, Doctors, or C, The Simpsons? That's Dr. Nicholas Riviera, MD, is a recurring character from which series? A, Holby City, B, Doctors, or C, The Simpsons? Okay, let's move on to the next question. I hope this pace is good. I hope you're getting them. This is a high intensity quiz. Let's move on to question eight. What was the error with the opening credits of Scrubs? So the opening title sequence of Scrubs, what was the error? Was it A, the x-ray of the pelvis was reversed? Let me pronounce it would help. B, actor Zach Graf wears the wrong name tag? Or C, the patient bed was from the wrong ward? So what was the error in Scrubs credits? I think if you're a big fan of Scrubs, you'll get this no problem. If you're not such a big fan of Scrubs, that's why it's multiple choice, have a guess. Okay. Let's move on to question nine. Dr. Leonard H. McCoy, or Bones, uh, is a character from which series? So that's Dr. Leonard H. Bones McCoy is a character from which series? If you have no clue, I reckon you could have a good guess. Okay. Moving on to the last question of this round. Gosh, we've got through round one already. We are on fire. 
The last question is true or false? Dr. Hadi Manji was a character in Holby City. A character in Holby City, true or false? No idea, 50-50. That's the beauty of a true or false question. Okay. Now the way this is gonna work is we're gonna done round one of questions. We're now gonna answer round one of questions straight away so that you're not kept in suspense for the entire quiz about what the answers are. Much more fun this way. So we'll do the answers, top them up, give yourself a total. Let me know how you're doing in the chat. Let me know how many you got right. You know, let's give, let's give the answers out. Yeah, tell me how you did and stuff. Let's see how we're getting on. Uh, and then we'll do each, after each round, we'll mark each round. And then I said, if we get to the end on the pitch round, that's when it, we'll have to see who has done well and who hasn't done well. Does that all make sense? So let's go on to the answers for round one. There we go. So round one, question one. That was Dr. Gregory House, probably the worst best man in the history of medicine, but who plays this irritable medic? The answer was, of course, Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie, do message in the chat if you've got that one right. I must admit I'm working on a slight delay, so I won't see your answers for a couple of seconds, but at the end of the questions, I'll go back and see how people did. Question two. For Sandra Rose in Killing Eve, she was saving lives in which TV drama? It was, of course, Grey's Anatomy. How many got that right? There's a few few people I'm sure got that one. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Here we go. This is obviously a classic, a great, great series, but which what comedy sitcom from the 70s involved being a part of a mobile army surgical hospital? It was, of course, MASH. Yes, that's right. If you're wondering how I know this, it's because it was on like Comedy Gold for, for, in the 90s, so that's how I watched it. But anyway, MASH. MASH is the answer there. Now, I will give you a bonus point, going slightly off script here, if you spelt this correctly with the asterisks in the right place. So if you wrote it without the asterisks, get one point. If you wrote MASH with the asterisks, get two points. That's how generous I am and how much of a stickler for detail I am also. Okay, how long has the British TV series of Casualty been running for? Well, let's go back to Stephen to find out, shall we? 34 years. Almost as old as the National Brain Appeal, which is 36 years. Okay. Thank you there for that, Stephen. Of course it was 34 years. Of course it was. Who didn't know that? Me, Billy. Okie dokie. Question five. The character Dr. Jack Shepard is in which series? Of course, he was uh, from Lost. So if you did look closely at the picture, A, someone commented before, he looks rather lost, but that, that wasn't the clue. He's got the name of the experiment, the Dharma experiment, on his uniform. Yeah, if you zoomed in, you might have seen that one. Obviously, it wouldn't have helped if you didn't know much about Lost, but you know, it might, might have helped you out. Okay, in the series Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, what was Dr. Quinn's first name? So her first name was Michaela. So Dr. Michaela, or Mike, sometimes known Quinn, she was played by Jane Seymour, as you know. And actually, did you know she has a rare condition where she had two different colored, colored eyes? You can see it just inside. So her right eye is hazel and her left eye is green. <laughs> Quiz and facts, who knew this was gonna be so much fun. I hope it's fun. Anyway, Dr. Nicholas Riviere, MD, is a recurring character from which series? It was, of course, of The Simpsons. Hi, everybody. And that's where I assume you're all saying, hi, Dr. Nick, back to me. And this could have completely flopped, not worth knowing if you are saying that. But I'm going to assume you did to make me smile. Of course, it was Dr. Nick, because he's more commonly known, but his full title was Dr. Nicholas Riviera, MD, from The Simpsons. Equally, if you didn't shout, hide on it back, you are not a true Simpsons fan and you can't call yourself one. Okay, the next question is, what was the error with the opening credits of Scrubs? Okay, Scrubs fans, I'm pretty sure you'd have got this one easily. Non-Scrub fans, you could have guessed. It was the X-ray of the pelvis was reversed. So for the first five years, they didn't realize that the X-ray they put up at the main bit at the end was actually the wrong way around. And it did eventually turn it back around, I think in about series five. But I do believe that fans got so upset that it was different that they changed back again. So a reverse the pelvis. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, someone said hi, Dr. Nick, back to me. 
Thank you very much, Alex. Alexis. That's great. Uh, and, and Lucy said hi, Dr. Nick, as well. Yep, yeah, great. Uh, I'm enjoying that some people responded to me. Otherwise, that would have upset me. Okay, carrying on. Sorry, distracted. Dr. Leonard H. Bones McCoy is a character from which series? Come on, look at the picture. The picture kind of gives it away, I think. That uniform, that uniform could only be from Star Trek. The answer was Star Trek, yes. Okay, and the last question of this round. Is true or false, Dr. Hadi Bangier was a character in Holby City. The answer is false. He's actually a consultant neurologist and honorary senior lecturer at the National Hospital, which is what we're all here to help raise to help fund that hospital. So. There we go. A little bit of a nice little segue in there. You, anyone saw that one coming? No? Well, I dropped it in seamlessly. So you can actually find out more about the doctor here. And if you go on to um, discover.nationalbrainappeal.com, there's loads more stories and you can find out more information about all the great work that the National Brain Appeal are doing to help the National Hospital. So do check that out after the quiz. Not now, after the quiz, because we've got a few more things to get through. So yeah, that was round one done. That great? Oh, I can see some more. Hi, Dr. Nick's going. Oh, apparently I'm doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you for that. That does help me keep me going. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, we've got an 8 out of 10. Uh, Alana got 8 out of 10. That's great. Uh, someone's saying, um, Hadi would have been a great doctor in Holby City, given the chance. Uh, yes, Joan, I, I, I do agree also. Uh, <laughs> he was on CNN recently, though. There we go. More. Oh, we've got a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 for Insane in the Membrane team. Rick there, well done, Rick and your team. That's good going. 6 out of 10. Wow, that's a good, good scores in there too. Another 6 out of 10 as well. Uh, we've got another 9 out of 10. All good. Um, Andrew's Angel's on 7 out of 10. Robux 8 out of 10. My auntie is on 8 out of 10. She's probably cheated. My boss is also on 9. He's got 8 out of 10 as well. Also, he might have seen some of these questions before. So that is also cheating. Disqualified. Um, and we've got 4. That doesn't matter much to do at TV. They're multiple choice. I'm sure the people have got good ones. Uh, we're guessing. So there we go. Uh, yeah, we've got so, oh, 10 out of 10. I've seen our first 10 out of 10 from Spiders of Mars. They obviously watch a lot of medical TV or very lucky in the uh, guessing. So who knows? That was great. Sorry, my, the comments down here, hence the reason I wasn't looking at the screen. Okay, that was good. Yeah, we enjoyed that one. I'm sure more, more scores are coming in and, uh, and people will respond um, but very well. Oh, I'm getting a comment on my tie. That has made my day. I'm glad someone noticed the matching on-branded coloured tie. That's great. The lights as well are on colour too, but it's a little bit daylight still, so you can't see them. Maybe as the quiz goes on, you'll spot the lights kind of coming into their fold. Great. Let's go on to the next round then. Otherwise, we'll be here all night if I keep talking. So round two is a general knowledge round. Um, so this one, uh, for those who didn't know about TV, maybe you'll catch up on this one. Quick reminder there, don't forget to donate if you're having fun so far. If round one was good, have a quick donation. You can still keep going the quiz while you're donating. Quick reminder. Okay, so going on to question two. First, first question, going big and strong straight away. Dr. Hadi, who we just heard about, it's going to give us the first question. So now you get to meet the man and see uh, why you should have been on Holby City. So over to you. So the next question is very appropriate for the National Hospital and also for a neurologist. And the question is, which animal has the biggest brain in the world? And for an extra point, if you can identify the person who painted the picture behind me, that's a bonus point. Thank you there. Yes, of course, the question is, which animal has the largest brain in the world? And going off script, adding in bonus questions for our, only I'm allowed to do that, but we'll allow it a second bonus point question in there for um, if you can name the artist of the picture in the background. So we don't mind going off script. That is all, all good. And Dr. Halley's allowed to, to do that. Next question. Question 12 for those keeping up. So, well known for his collaborations with Quentin Blake, which novelist, poet, and screenwriter crashed and suffered a brain injury while serving as a fighter pilot in World War II? Good question. Good question. No multiple choice. This is down to knowledge. Or guess. You can still guess. I'll let you collaborate for a little bit. Okay, tough question, so I'll leave it a little bit. We'll move on very soon. Let's go. 
Okay, over the past 20,000 years, has the brain increased or decreased in size? So over the past 20,000 years, has the human brain on average increased or decreased in size? Basically 50-50, so have a guess, have a guess. Lots of 50-50s, I'd like to make it fun. I have a video question. <laughs> yes, we love a video question. This time we have TV personality and favourite on our breakfast TV sofas. Another big supporter of National Brain Appeal. Let's go over to Richard Arnold. Hello, quizzers. Richard Arnold here. Not so live from his shed. The glamour of showbiz these days, eh? So good luck with this one. Uh, Doctors Without Borders was originally founded in 1971 by a small group of doctors and journalists from which country? That question again. Doctors Without Borders was originally founded in 1971 by a small group of doctors and journalists, but from which country? Of course, the question there was Doctors Without Borders was originally founded in 1971 by a small group of doctors and journalists from which country? Can you tell which country that would be from? Thank you, Richard, for that question. Much appreciated for your support as well. A little bit longer. Have a guess. There's lots of countries in the world. It must be one of them. Have a go. Or do you know the answer? Are you clever enough to know this one? We'll find out soon, I'm sure. Okay, question 15. A sports question. For those of you dying out for a sports question, I know uh, no quiz is complete without a sports question. And this is the one. Still related. So, yeah, very clever. Um, in 2020, after a long-term concussion, Alex Danson retired from which sport? So she suffered a concussion and in 2020 she finally retired uh, from which sport? Was it A, rowing, B, hockey or C, boxing? I will give you a clue here because I'm generous. She was an Olympic gold medalist for Great Britain. There you go. An Olympic gold medalist. Doesn't help that much because it's still all Olympic sports, but you know, I'm trying. Okie dokie. Oh, this next one. So we've had a sports question. Well, let's throw in a film question, shall we? Um, not TV, we've done TV. This is film. In The Matrix, does Neo take the blue or the red pill? So in the film The Matrix, does Neo take the blue or the red pill? Now this is one of those ones where you think, you must have seen this film. I know the answer to that one. It's the, oh, hang on, is it blue or red? I don't know. 50-50, have a guess. You might get it. Another film question, because we like the good film question. In the film Fifty First Dates, you'll know it. Film Fifty First Dates, Lucy has short-term memory loss. How long does Henry have to convince her to fall in love with him before she forgets him? So he has to convince her to fall in love, but how long does he have before the short-term memory loss kicks in and she forgets everything? How long does he have before she forgets him? There are some difficult questions in this round, but they're all guessable. Okie dokie. Next question coming through. And it's my favourite question of the entire quiz, I must admit. So if you don't like this question, I haven't liked any so far, then it's all downhill from here. No, I'm joking, there are some good questions coming. But this one is my favourite. Along with the eight arms and three hearts, how many brains does an octopus have? Along with the eight arms and three hearts, how many brains does an octopus have? Ooh, tricky one. Who knew they had three hearts even? How many brains do they have? Have a think. Go with your gut. Okay? Just put a number down, basically. Okie dokie. Let's move on. In 2019, which countries have the joint highest ranking average IQ? So the joint highest average ranking um, IQ. Was it China and Taiwan, B, Singapore and Hong Kong, or C, America and the UK? Bear in mind, Dr. Hadi Banji is in the UK, just as a, you know. There we go, so multiple choice again. You might have an idea. You might have a twinkling of what it could be. There might be one that you immediately rule out, who knows? 
<laughs> probably do. It's probably one you've immediately crossed off straight away. Oh, but is that the trick? <gasps> Who knows? Anyway, let's move on before I waffle on even further. Okay, question 20, and this is the last one of this round. In a study of London taxi drivers, researchers found that they had a larger hippocampus. We had a hippocampus team them earlier, didn't we? They obviously knew. They knew they were going to be picked up in the question, or not. Within the brain, what is the hippocampus responsible for? Was it A, memory, B, learning, or C, small talk? So within the brain, what is the hippocampus responsible for? Is it A, memory, B, learning, or C, small talk? Now the hippocampus team, I think you get minus points if you get this wrong. Just saying, whoever's in team hippocampus, as I saw at the start, that's a minus point if you get this one wrong. <laughs> I can see you on the chat. I think that's a fair as everyone else, don't you think? I think that's fair. When a question about Captain Green comes up, I'll, I'll punish Team Captain Green just the same. Or the... I can't read that type in that name. I'll move on to another one. Or I'll just move on from that point altogether. Okay. That was my name again. That was the that round. That was the round two. So, quick donate. Have a quick donate. It's the opposite way around to where I'm looking. It's always one way of pointing. Have a quick donation. There's all plenty of time. And then we'll move on to the answers of that round. Thank you so much to all those who have donated so far. I've seen a few shout outs going on in the chat. Do really, really appreciate everyone who has donated. Um, and please do, do keep it going. As I said, this is all for an amazing cause and it will really make a difference. So please, please do keep doing if you can. Thank you. Okay, I can see some jokes coming through, maybe giving away some answers as well in the chat. So um, see if we'll be able to pick up on that. But let's go over to the questions and then let's look at the answers. That's what I meant, the answers. So you over to Hadi again for the answer. Everyone ready for the answer to which animal has the largest brain in the world and the bonus question for those of you playing for that one too. Here we go. And the answer is the sperm whale whose brain weighs about eight kilograms compared to an elephant that weighs five kilograms and the human brain weighs 1.5 kilograms. But if you look at the brain mass and body ratio, then small ants and small birds come out top, followed by mice and then humans. And the answer to the bonus point is Nelson Mandela. That's a painting of his prison cell on Robin Island. Okay. Thank you there, Hadi. So, of course, the answer was the sperm whale. And the, the bonus points, or we'll just have a bonus point if you've got Nelson Mandela. Okay, you all get that one. I'm going to have a quick pause because I've been told to give a shout out. A happy birthday to Sophie Leggett. If you're playing here tonight, Sophie, thank you so much for joining us on your birthday. Uh, we wish you all a happy birthday. I'm not going to sing, I'm afraid, because... If there was a crowd of people joining with me, I would, but um, happy birthday to you. There you go, I did it. Happy birthday, Sophie. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on your birthday and hope you had a special day. And the weather's been great for it as well. Back to the quiz. Okay, question 12. Well known for his collaborations with Quentin Blake, which novelist, poet, and screenwriter crashed, suffered a brain injury while serving as a fighter pilot in World War II? It was Roald Dahl. Who got that one, eh? Who knew that? Apparently, this is when his famous darker side started to come out to the fore after he developed um, this desire to shock people. And it all kind of, this underlying dark humour didn't manifest before the crash. So this kind of uh, brain injury suffered may be brought on that darker side. Interesting fact to do. I'm seeing more people are wishing Sophie happy birthday. Please, everybody write happy birthday, Sophie, in the chat. That would um, make her day. Go on, everyone do it. Go on, I'll pause for a minute while you, you all go write happy birthday. Seriously. <laughs> okay, we'll carry on. Happy birthday, Sophie. I hope people have written happy birthday because um, that would be sweet. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, move on. So over the past 20,000 years, has the brain increased or decreased in size? The answer is decreased, actually. So research has suggested that our brains may have shrunk about 10% over the last 20,000 years, which is roughly like using a chunk of a tennis ball size. So that's quite a lot. Um, However, that doesn't mean, we're not sure yet, that means that we're dumber or smarter. There's a bit of debate whether that makes us dumber or smarter, so we don't know. Uh, I'm going to go with smarter because I think you're all doing fantastically well on this quiz. Let's keep going. Oh, the happy birthday messages have gone in. Everyone did it great. 
Okay, Doctors Without Borders, let's go over to uh, to Richard for this answer, because um, you'd rather he said it than me. So here we go, over to Richard for the answer. And the answer, France. In French, of course, Médecin Sans Frontières. Oh, look at me getting my lips around the lingo. Médecin Sans Frontières. Répétez-vous. Thank you very much there, Richard. Yes, of course, it was France, Maison Sans Frontières. Don't do it, just he did it way better than me. I don't know why I tried to, to do it too. Uh, he clearly um, more, more uh, uh, of a pro than me at uh, accents there. Um, someone has pointed out that France has borders. Yes, yes, very, very funny. Okay. Apparently we had some confusion earlier on the chat as well about um, sperm whale. We'll give half a point if you said whale or any type of whale. If you said whale, we'll give you half a point. I'm feeling generous today. Sperm whale for the full point, half a point for whale or something whale, like a blue whale. So you get half a point for, for that. Um, I'm feeling generous. You, that might cause a fight. I don't know. It might cause controversy amongst you all, but I'm the quiz host and what I say goes. So half a point. Okay, in 2020, after a long-term cushion, Axe Danson retired from which sport? She was the GB gold winning athlete, as part of a team at Rio with the hockey team. Yes, she was part of the successful women's GB hockey team who, who won gold. And unfortunately, she had a, a knock against the wall, uh, not during the sport, just at home. And after a, a long time of trying to, to get back, um, decided that it, it wasn't um, safe for her to do so, so retired. But she's all well, so... Uh, good, we wish her all the best as well. If she, by any chance she's watching. Alex, if you're watching this quiz, thank you very much. I'm not sure you are, though. Oh, did I miss a question there? I was skipping too fast. No, I'm all right. So in the Matrix, does Neo take the blue or the red pill? What did everyone go for? Which one would you take? It was the, the red pool, pill. Okay. It was a 50-50, so hopefully some of you got that. In the film Fifty First Dates, Lucy has a short-term memory loss. How long does Henry have to convince her to fall in love before she forgets him? The answer is one day. So that's kind of the premises of the film. Hence the Fifty First Dates. Every day he has to try and convince her to fall in love with him again. I mean, all we looked for was a number there. So uh, if you got that right, if you said 24 hours, you can have the point. I'm not being that pedantic. Um, but one day, 24 hours, you get the, get the point there. Okay. Uh, okay, so next last next question, number 18. Uh, along, my favorite question. Yes, we finally come to it. Along with their eight arms and three hearts, how many brains does an octopus have? Did you work it out? Did you think cleverly? Someone say one, someone say eight. What did everyone go for? The answer was nine. So actually each arm contains its own mini brain as well as its main brain. So they can have a both centralized and localized control of their actions. That's pretty cool. Didn't know that before this quiz. Everyone else knew that one already. Do, do, do say if you knew that one beforehand or if you guessed nine, worked it out logically, let me know. Hopefully, yeah, we're learning. We're learning. This is a learning game as well. So hopefully we've done all that. Okay, in 2019, which country had the highest ranking average IQ? I can tell you straight off the bat, it was not America and UK. UK came 17th in total. Even with Dr. Hadi in our, in our team, we came 17th. Um, the answer was... Singapore and Hong Kong, so they came, came joint top uh, of that. Um, so yes, so that was the answer we're looking for, B, Singapore and Hong Kong. In a study of London taxi drivers, researchers found that they had a large hippocampus within the brain. What's the hippocampus responsible for? Team hippocampus, can you tell us? There, I think there was a bit of a clue in the, in the chat earlier. The answer is memory. This kind of suggests the more that you are forced to memorize, the larger this part of your brain grows. And just to point out at this stage, as we like to at the end of every round, that the National Brain Pill funds services and researches for dementia and other degenerative diseases, which part of that looks into the role of memory and why it can break down. Um, so very important question there for the work that uh, National Brain Pill do, and another reason to, um, to donate if you can. Great, how do we all get on? Everyone enjoy that? Let me know your scores in the chat. Um, oh, someone didn't like this round. Someone's struggling with this round. Uh, <laughs> there we go. It was a difficult one. I did warn you at the start. It was a difficult one, but hopefully there was a lot of uh, guessing could, could have happened to do in there. I've seen some mixed results. Some people have done this with me before. So great. 
and tell me how people are getting on. This is a great time as well to, to, to give a donation if you can. You know, you can still be doing the quiz watching. You get your phone out, and on your phone, you quickly type this URL in, and then you can still be doing the quiz whilst donating. So it kind of works, doesn't it? So it's not going to detract from, from the quiz. So you're all, all good. Okay, so I've talked a lot. I need a drink stop up. You probably need a drink stop up. So we're going to have a break very shortly very shortly, not just yet though. Uh, we've got a few things to discuss before we go into the break. And the first is during the break, we set another challenge. That's right, another challenge during the break where it can go on for the rest of the quiz as well. And this one is an exciting one and it's worth paying attention to. So this is the, um, it's a creative round called Show Us Your Brain. Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? And to help you explain what this is about, so I don't have to explain it again, we're going to go over to another celebrity. We're going to go over to comedy actor Kevin Alden, who is going to um, tell us all about what this is all for. Okay, I don't know why he was in the hut, but I liked it. Uh, so there you go, that's the creative round. And there's actually a little bit of new news that came in just before the quiz started. We've actually uh, decided to give you a prize for, for this. So there will be a prize for the Show Us Your Brain competition. And that is a hundred pound grind voucher. Grind voucher being the coffee shop in uh, in London uh, and also the National Brain and Pill goodie bag as well. So Grind have kindly donated this £100 gift voucher to give away to the winner. So we do have a team who will be um, uh, who will be judging this. Apparently you might not have heard the sound on that video. I don't know why that is. So I'll have to explain the competition again, uh, which is fine. I can try and fix maybe that while I didn't play in, in, in the break. Um, oh, you could hear the sound, but you couldn't see the video. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll explain the question in a minute, just to say there is a prize for, for this. So um, the, the, the competition here is what we want you to do is we want to show us your brain. So we want you to draw, uh, doodle, make a model, create a digital image, get some porridge out and make a brain. However you choose to be creative in the break, make yourself a representation of a brain, however you choose to, and we want you to upload it to a, a social network channel, we'll monitor them all with the hashtag BrainboxQuiz, and then our team will go through and check all the entries here, and then before the end of the quiz, so tonight, we will choose a winner, and we'll announce the winner at the end of the quiz, and they will win the, the £100 um, voucher and the goodie bag. Does that all make sense? So go and doodle, draw, sketch, scamp, build, create, whatever, however you, you get creative, um, a picture of, of a brain and then upload that to, to social media with that hashtag and we will check that, the team will check that and we'll pick a winner. I'm not sure how they're judging it. It's not me judging this one. I'm not sure. They might be looking for creativity, they might be looking for humor, they might be looking for, yeah, they gave it a go. Might be looking for genius or the kind of the level of, of engagement. I don't know what they're looking for, but um, so kind of have a go and see where we go and it's a bit of fun either way. Okay, so sorry about the sound there. We'll try and look what that fixed. Just a very quick a quick announcement as well to say we've nearly reached a thousand pounds, which is amazing. Please do keep giving generously. This is a break as well. You've got a chance to do that. So thank you very much um, for those who have given. And a special big shout out to Sue for a wonderful donation. Thank you very much, Sue. Your donation uh, means a lot to us and will make a massive difference. So we do really appreciate it. Please do, do, do keep on um, donating people. It really does help. Okay, so we're going to go for a break now. Uh, I'm going to give it 15 minutes, so we're back at half past eight. Um, about half past eight, um, that's what time my clock says, so maybe just after half eight. We'll be back then and we're ready to go. I'm going to leave up a few slides for you so you can see what is going on and kind of how, um, you know, I'll put the, the picture round back up as well. Please make sure you do the picture round as well. It's a good time to do it so you can see um, how that's going. So I'll leave a few slides up and then I'll disappear for a minute and you can have a break from my voice. Thank you, everyone.
Okay, welcome back everybody. I hope you had a good break and topped up your drinks. I know I did. I also had time for a costume change. Yes! Just like the Eurovisions, every quiz needs a costume change at the Harvard Cruise. I'm now wearing my doctor's jacket, getting all on theme, on theme for this quiz. I hope you enjoy. Um, I am, so I don't care. Okay, well thanks for uh, for coming back. Um, we do have a few things to, to kind of talk through and then I'll crack back on with the second half of the quiz. First off, I've been chatting away during the break and seen that, that, that video for the creative round didn't play quite as smoothly as we wanted to. So I'm gonna have another attempt at this and we're gonna see if we can make the video work this time. So just bear with me for a second because those are a little bit of stuff to sort out and hopefully we'll be able to see here um, the sound this time because um, it's worth hearing the sound. So let's give this a try and see if it makes a difference. Let me know if it works or not. Show us your brain. Yeah. And now it's time for you to have a little bit of an artistic input into the proceedings in the round that we call Show Us Your Brain. Yeah because we would like you to make a representation of a brain. It could be pictorially, or it could be a 3D model, you know, made out of porridge or something. I've just given you some suggestions. And then you submit your entry uh, to be judged, and then the best one will win some kind of prize. Maybe it'll be a brain. I don't know. Actually, all the details are with our host, Dan. So I'll leave it to him to give it to you. <laughs> Okay, did that all work this time? Hopefully you heard the sound and you heard what you need to do again. So this will go on for the rest of this quiz and we'll judge it right at the end. I'll let you know uh, the kind of when we're closing the, the competition and when we're judging and when the kind of um, when it's closed and stuff and we'll make the announcement at the end. So you still have plenty of time to get your entries in. I've seen a few that have come in and there are some good ones already. Um, there's some fantastic entries in there. Um, still all to play for, I reckon you could win it. I reckon if you've got a good one that you're brewing up, uh, you could you could win this. So so do do have a go and enter. And uh, and whilst you're there, whilst you're uploading to social media, why don't you tell everyone about all the good causes? Maybe suggest that other people get involved and make a donation as well. A bit of promotion, why not, eh? Okay, so just before we move on to the next question, I think it's time to give out some prizes. Yes, it's that time. I'm gonna announce the team name winner now. So everyone ready? I'm assuming everyone's back. I did tell you how fast, so you should be back. If not, well, you might miss out. So the winner of the team name is, drum roll. Which sounds really dramatic when you're on your own. The winner is, Rick Cannon with Insane in the Membrane. That was my favorite, so well done, Rick. That was a good name, and all of the team of Insane in the Membrane. I like that one. But there were some great entries too, uh, so thanks to everyone who is taking part. Rick, I think we've got people who've got your username from, from the, the YouTube settings, so uh, they will be, uh, the team of National Brain will be in touch to uh, let you know about your £10 water saving voucher. And the thing you're obviously most excited about, which is the goodie bag, which I can assure you will be fantastic. So uh, congratulations, Rick and the team there uh, for winning that. Um, do feel free to send a, uh, a message to National Brain Pill uh, on any of their social accounts if, if you wanted to get in touch with them as well, Rick. Um, but that will be on, on its way to you, so, so well done. So we're doing very well on the donation side of things as well. Um, just a little reminder there of the URL. I'm not going to get this angle right, am I? Um, please do do donate. We are uh, making huge amounts of money already, uh, which will be a great support. We do have a target of three thousand pounds. We're trying to make today, and we are well on our way towards that. I'll keep you updated how close we get to, to beating it as we go. Uh, like I said, just before the break, we were at nearly a thousand pounds. Let's get over that. Let's get halfway let's get even closer let's get to that 3000 so that we um, can smash that target and, and really help make a difference so please i do encourage you if you can and are able to uh, please do donate rick if you've just won a prize i really hope you've donated because that would be unfair if you win and donate and no, sorry, i'm not i'm not guilting you that is not what i'm allowed to do i'm sure there's all sorts of gift day rules well i'm not allowed to say that but i did okay um before we go on then let's uh, find out a little bit more about why we're all doing this let's have a little reminder of why we're doing this quiz and having so much fun um, tonight. Over to you, Richard Arnold again.
Thank you guys for joining us for the Brain Box uh, quiz. Now tonight's quiz is hosted by the National Brain Appeal who raise funds to advance treatment and research at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery and the Institute of Neurology, together known of course collectively as Queen's Square. All donations made tonight will go towards finding new treatments and cures for neurological and neuromuscular conditions. We are suggesting a five pound entry donation, but please feel free to give whatever you can afford and thank you very much indeed. Yes, thank you there, Richard. Please, please do know National Brain Pool, we are doing tremendous work and, and helping out, especially in this time where things are difficult. Your money really, really will go to a, a good cause and to good use. So please do, if you can, uh, find a way of donating. Much appreciated. Okay, are we ready to move on to round three? I hope you enjoyed round one too. I do warn you, round three is a little bit of an odd one, okay? This round is called Figure Out the Fridge. Yeah, I did warn you, this might be the oddest round you've ever seen on a quiz. But we're going to give it a go. I think you might find it fun. Basically, we're going to have to guess some people's fridges. Okay, I'll give you a little example of how this works as so you understand how this one is, is, is played. Okay, so let's move back onto the fridges. So in this example, what I normally do is what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you a load of people. But in this case, we've gone for our, our good old friend, Dr. Hadi Manji here, uh, as our example. Um, and then, so I think we're going to have four people. And I'm going to give you some little bit of information uh, about them. And then you've got to look at the fridge and see if you can guess which fridge belongs to them. So Dr. Hadi here, he organized the Mission Impossible Gala for National Brain Appeal. And he likes Marmites. So that would be the clue. And then the fridge would be this. So Hannah's gone all out and giving you the obvious answer there by putting in the poster for the flyer there. His marmite is also there in the fridge. He likes it cold apparently. That's why he keeps it in the fridge. You either love it or you hate it. Or you either like it warm or you like it cold, I guess. It could be a new slogan for next year. Um, who knows? So that's an example. So you will see four people and four fridges. And then you have to guess which fridge belongs to which person. Yeah? It <laughs> couldn't be more obvious, could it? Okay, so these are our four people. So these are um, the four people we have to guess about. So we have A, Chris Turner, who is a clinical director of Queen Square. He's a consultant neurologist. Yes, that's right. A little fat, he has his own small holding and looks after his own pigs and sheep and can make homemade jam. Mm, interesting. Okay, we've then got Joan Grief, who I do believe is watching. I saw her comment earlier. Hi, Joan. Uh, it is our consultant neurosurgeon. She's all about fridge organization, going so far that she orders her tibbles into order of fanciness. Who doesn't do that? Keep an eye out for that fridges in a minute. We then have, um, oh, we have two Bs for some reason. That's meant to be a C, John Duncan. Apologies for that mistake. That's a C, John Duncan. And John Duncan is a neurologist as well, and he's an all round fun guy. We then have D, Johanna David, who is an actress. You may have seen her on Celebrity Gogglebucks, or she starred in Expector Morse and Pride and Prejudice, amongst many other things, and is a big uh, uh, ambassador of National Brain Appeal. Now, she likes to prep for the week, and as she says, she always has a meal prepared that she prepared earlier, ready in her fridge. Okay, there's interesting clues there. Okay, so these are our four fridges. Have a look, have a little closer look, and these are the four fridges. Now, you need to match up each one, so I want a 21, uh, for 21, I want you to say A, B, C, or D. I've got it right now. Look, it's changed to C. Obviously, I corrected myself. Uh, 22, A, B, C, or D, and so forth. Okay, that's what the, how you need to answer these. I'll go through each fridge in a little bit more um, detail. So fridge number 21, we've got lots of booze here, but it's balanced out with a lot of green as well. Um, so that's good, healthy. Uh, we've got the next fridge, 22. Lots of dishes here, uh, but only two eggs left. Hmm. Okay, question number three. Obviously, there's a debate in this family about whether it's green or blue milk, but there's a lot of milk. Also, a lot of breads. So there must be a family of bread lovers. And lots of dishes there, and they are all, uh, apparently, you can only have a pattern dish. That seems to be the rule in this family household as well. And the last one here. Okay, I'll give you a fun fact to this one. Um, this person believes that five is the perfect number for almost any dish. Might be why there's five mushrooms, I don't know. Um, that's... It might not help you at all, but uh, it was a useful fun fact as well. So there are your four fridges, and these are your four people. Can you match the fridge to the right person? I did warn you this was an odd, odd round, but hopefully it's quite fun. It's a bit different and it's quite fun. So I'll leave this up for a little bit while you have a bit of a debate and you uh, kind of look closely into these fridges to see who might belong to who. If you don't know, have a guess. This is the motto of this quiz, as it seems to be. Oh, 
oh, I apologise, you, you have a new role as a neurosurgeon. Sorry about that. Well, congratulations. Whilst you're all looking at this as well, I'm going to do a big shout out to Elizabeth Cormat for her donation. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. We really appreciate that. That will make all the difference. And in fact, I'm going to take this moment to announce that we have hit the £1,000 mark. Elizabeth, I think you might have tipped us over the edge, but thank you so much to everyone who has donated. Uh, we've hit that £1,000 mark. Do please keep going so we can get to that 3000 We do really appreciate all your donations and hard work. I'll go back to the fridges and leave you a little bit longer before I give you the answers as per the other rounds straight afterwards. This is where I could have done with some really catchy background music. That would have um, gone down rather well right now. It's a bit like who's you know through the keyhole, but it's through the fridge door. I should have played that theme tune. That would have that would have fit rather well, I think. I don't know it, so otherwise I'd hum it. If you know that theme tune, hum in your head. Elisa likes the mushrooms. They she thinks they're very cute in this one. I'll be sure to pass that information on. <laughs> Okay, almost up on this before I move on. I'll give you a bit of time there. We all ready? We all ready for the answers on this one? Yeah, well, I'm going for it. So let's go for the answers for the fridge round, okay? So the answers, number 21, the fridge obviously belongs to Joan Grieve. Congratulations, you got that right. The tipples are there in order of fancy, I am sure. So that was 21. 20 is Johanna David. So the prepared meals are all there for you to see. Lots of them stacked in their shelves there. Congratulations if you got that one right as well. If you got this one right, that means you're on the, the complete sweep. 23 was Chris Turner. So yes, Chris Turner. Um, he's got spore holdings, so maybe that gives away some of the food there. Please, you see some meat. No, it's a bit of a hard, that one. Which means obviously 24 is John Duncan, the all-round fun guy who loves mushrooms. And mushroom risotto, I think, is his favorite dish. That's why there are so many mushrooms. Apparently, mushrooms go over everything. So there we go. Um, I hope you cottoned on to my fun guy joke. I was quite proud of that one. Okay, okay. That was round four. Uh, round three, sorry, round three, which means we're on to round four, which is our final round. This has gone super fast. I've loved every second of it. Um, so I hope you're all enjoying it as well. Another reminder to donate. Let's keep going. If we're coming towards the end and we want to get that 3,000, then we really do need your, your donations. So please, please, please do donate what you can. Okay, moving on to round four. So round four is they said what? So this is all quotes from famous people and you have to help identify or answer the questions to who may have said them. This is a quote round, okay? So let's see how we get on with this one. Okay, so question number 25. So the last round was only four, so we've thrown ourselves out a bit of normal numbering. So question 25. It's called like up here, and it's called memory. It's called other things. Who gave this very intellectual quote? Was it A, Boris Johnson, B, Donald Trump, or C, Homer Simpson? I am seeing um, some clean sweeps in the fridge round and some zeros. So <laughs> it was a mixed round, that one. But it seems to be that it was enjoyed. Okay, back to question number 25. Who said this? Was it A, Boris Johnson, B, Donald Trump, or C, Homer Simpson? I have a guess if you don't know. Could generally be any of them. <laughs> Oops, I should have said that. Okay, the brain is a muscle that can move the world. What was it A, Steven Spielberg? B, Stephen King, or C, Stephen Hawkins? The brain is a muscle that can move the world. Steven Spielberg, Stephen King, or Stephen Hawkins? I'll give you a massive clue on this one because I'm feeling generous today. The first name is Stephen. Yes. And they're all wearing glasses. Ah, oh, I'm making it easy for you now. Okie dokie, let's move on to the next question. So slightly different this one. But Justin Bieber once said, I'm crazy, I'm nuts. Just the way my brain works, I'm not blank. 
I think differently. So I just want you to fill in the blank. I'm not blank, I fill in differently. So is that I'm not normal, I think differently? Is that I'm not different, I think differently? Or I'm not a good singer, I think differently? Okay. Then multiple choice, so you can have a guess. Have a guess at these ones. Let's move on to question number 28. The human brain is an incredible pattern matching machine. Is the answer A, Jeff Bezos, B, Steve Jobs, or C, Carl Lagerfeld? Lagerfeld, I can't pronounce his name, sorry. So we've obviously got the CEO of Amazon here, Steve Jobs, needs no introduction, and Carl Lagerfeld, the German fashion meister. Okay. Let me move on to the next question now, if we are all ready for it. Kanye West once said, wash your brain, don't blank. Was it, wash your brain, don't wash your ears? Wash your brain, don't brainwash? Or wash your brain, don't shower? A, B or C there, have a pick. Whilst you're reading that one, I'll read you out some other Kanye West quotes just because he has a load we can choose from um, and they're great. So Kanye once also said, I don't even listen to rap. My apartment is too nice to listen to rap in. Classic there. Well, this is my favourite one I think that he's ever said is, I hate it when I'm on the flight and I wake up with a water bottle next to me. Like, oh great, now I've got to be responsible for this water bottle. <laughs> yes, because water bottles are a great responsibility, Kanye. So he's had some classic quotes, but this is the one we're looking for the answer on today. Is it A, B, or C? I'm happy to guess at your answer here. Okay. Question 30, if you're keeping up with the numbering orders, which I told you at the beginning we were a bit all over the place. Any man who reads too much and uses his brain too little will fall into lazy habits of thinking. As any man who reads too much and uses his brain too little will fall into lazy habits of thinking. Was it A, Albert Einstein, B, Albert Schwarzer, or C, Prince Albert? Schweitzer, 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 that's a better way of pronouncing it. He was, of course, the, the, the famous um, physician. Any guesses? Okay, I'll give you a clue. They've all got Albert in a name. I know, same joke, but you know, it's a good one, so you gotta give it again. Okay, okay, let's move on to question 31. Okay, my brain is the key that sets me free. Was this A, Nelson Mandela, B, Harry Houdini, or C, Jose Mourinho? A, Nelson Mandela, B, Harry Houdini, or C, Jose Mourinho? You know who all these three people are? Could have been any one of them. Okay, moving on to question 32, which sadly is the penultimate question of tonight's quiz. I can't believe how quickly we've got to this stage. Penultimate question, so do make sure you're donating and let's move on to the penultimate question. Clint Eastwood once said, the brain has to be blank, the same as the rest of the body. The brain has to be cleansed, the same as the rest of the body. The brain has to be washed, the same as the rest of the body. The brain has to be exercised the same as the rest of the body. A, B, or C, what did Clint Eastwood say? I think we've had some big donations for Ken Kevin and an anonymous donor. So thank you very much to those donations. Donations are still coming in, so thank you very much. We do really appreciate it, and I hope you're having fun too. Okay, the last question of the quiz. It has got to that time already, sadly. The last question, and it's a video question from our friend Kevin Allen again. Hopefully the sound works this time as well. So do let me know if the sound works. I will repeat the question anyway. So let's see. Who said, I like nonsense, it wakes up the brain cells? Was it A, Dr. Zeus, B, Lewis Carroll, or C, Harry Hill. 
Thank you there, Kevin. Of course, the question was, I like nonsense. It wakes up the brain cells. Was that Dr. Zeus, Lewis Carroll, or Harry Hill? What do you think, Dr. Zeus, Lewis Carroll, or Harry Hill? Any clues? Just for those chatting, the donate link is in the uh, in the description below. So if you're looking for the donate link, it's in the description below, or or it's here. I got the pointing right. Finally, end of the quiz, I got it right. Um, so that is a donation link for those who are still looking. I think someone has shared it also in the chat. And so uh, thank you for for that. How's everyone getting on? Everyone enjoying it? I've seen some scores coming in the fridges. We've got a mixed bag of scores for the fridges there. Really professional photo of Turner. Yes, yes, Toby, I think that is a professional one. You're right. Uh, I hope everyone's enjoying it. Yeah, there were only nine questions that round. Yes, thanks for spotting. Um, there were nine. Just to keep you on your toes, and you spotted it. So well done for, for spotting that. Um, yeah, sorry about that. That is confusing, isn't it? To only have nine in one round. There was four in the round before, so it is a bit all over the place. Okie dokie. Shall we go back? We will go back to some, some answers, but first, just an announcement to say, remember to submit to your brain. It is closing very shortly, okay? We are gonna close this very shortly, um, and then we will announce the winner soon. Um, Okie dokie, one second. Okay, everyone doing their, their brain, sit down, upload them, and your picture rounds as well. Once we got through these questions, we will be, these answers, sorry, we will then also go through the answers of the picture rounds. We'll be doing the picture round answers shortly, so make sure that you have them ready too. Okie dokie, here we go to the answers. So it's called, like up here, it's called memory, and it's called other things. Could have been any, any one of them, but it was Donald Trump. You got that one right, Donald Trump. Very clever quote, quote that. The brain is a muscle that can move the world. Slightly more kind of sophisticated quote here. It's one of the Stevens. Which Stephen was it? It was B, Stephen King. Fun fact that um, after he had a, a, an accident with a van that left him with serious injuries, so he didn't want to buy the van, so he's going to take a sledgehammer to it. There you go. That's one way to get your own back on the van, is to buy it and beat it up. Not encouraging that whatsoever at all. Just a fun fact. Okay, Justin Bieber once said, I'm crazy, I'm nuts. Just the way my brain works, I'm not, I think, differently. I really wish it was a good singer. I'm not a good singer, but unfortunately the answer, that wasn't the answer. The answer was normal. I'm not normal, which, again, not true. I think differently. You got that one right. Apparently Sophie's birthday cake looks amazing. So Sophie, if you've uploaded a birthday cake, that looks amazing, well, well done. That is great to, to, to see. I'm gonna check that out shortly, so I wanna see a uh, birthday cake. Okay, question 28. The human brain is an incredible pattern making machine. Who said this? Was it Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs, or Carl Lagerfeld? The answer was Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon said this. There we go. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Moving on to question 29. Kanye West once said, wash your brain, don't brainwash, was the answer there. Wash your brain, don't brainwash. Although I would have believed it if he said any of those. I'm getting a bit like Graham Norton now, I'm, I'm getting a bit, uh, you know, a bit on it on people. I should really stop that. Any man who reads too much and uses his brain too little will fall into lazy habits of thinking. Was that Albert Einstein, as it Schwartz, Schweitzer, or Prince Albert? The answer was Albert Einstein. Yes, that's right. Okie dokie, and our next one. Coming near the end, sadly. The next one is, my brain is the key that sets me free. Is that by Nelson Mandela, Harry Houdini, or Jose Mourinho, the legendary Spurs boss? Add that one in, starting to be nice now, you see. Uh, the answer was Harry Houdini. Um, he said, the brain is the key that sets me free. It was said to be his mantra as he trained himself to conquer fear, allowing him to attempt to practice life-threatening stunts. Of course, he was the escape artist, Harry Houdini, and that was his mantra. There we go. Question number 32. Clint Eastwood once said the brain has to be the, what? The same as the rest of the body? The answer was 
exercise the same as the rest of the body. It's that C exercise the same as the rest of the body, which comes from a wider quote when he's talking about his film Invictus. I'm always trying to tackle subjects that tax me and make me think. The brain has to be exercised the same way as the rest of the body. So this was him talking about tackling his film Invictus. Okie dokie. Coming on to the last question. The last question coming up now. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? I'm going to make you wait until you've all donated. I think it's time to have one last donation and then we'll come on to the last question. Yeah, no, we're going to do that now. I've also realized it's got a bit dark, so I might turn another light on. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait until those last, those last donations come through. Maybe we'll wait until we hit the 3,000 before we could. Do... No, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. But thank you very much for all those who have donated. Now I need to find where he was. Okay, so let's go to the last question and then let's go back over to Kevin again for the answer. Who said I like nonsense? It wakes up the brain cells? The answer is A, Dr. Zeus. Thank you there, Kevin. You also gave me time to turn the light on. Um, so thank you for that. Yes, of course, the answer there was Dr. Zeus. Who got that one right? Did anyone get that one right? Um, anybody there? That's a good one. Hopefully you, some of you got that one right. Okay, that's back to the answers again. So that's the end of all the questions. So we still have a few more things to get through. Obviously, we've got the picture round answers to, to go through. Uh, I did say that that would be the, 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 the big decider at the beginning. So um, we do have that to, to come through. Um, the picture round now, though, um, has come to, to a stop. So I think we are judging the winners of that. Still submit your ones if, if you want to. But we're now um, picking the winners of the, uh, the picture round. So thanks to everyone who uploaded. That light is very bright. I perhaps shouldn't have turned that on after all. Um, but we'll, we'll deal with that and move on. Um, okay, so are we all ready for um, the picture round? Oh, we've got some scores coming in first. Uh, we've got a 4 out of 10 there. It was a difficult round. Don't be too harsh on yourself. It wasn't terrible. Oh, an 8 out of 9. Very good. Oh, another 8 out of 9 as well. Um, we've got a 4 out of 9. Uh, 5 out of 9 for Insane in the Membrane. Rick and the Insane in the Membrane winning team got 5 out of 9 there. Um, we've got 6 out of 10 as well. Um, Marina got a 6 out of 10 of Andrew's Angels. Um, someone's talking about stolen some cake. Stolen cake. Hippocampus got 2 out of 4 for the fridge round. That's, that's That was before. So... Um, Okay, and we've got uh, Intelli Membrane and Jess that have donated as well, so thank you very, very much for that. Um, oh, Hippocampus got six in this round, so that's a little bit better as well. Um, and uh, six, four out of nine for uh, Brain Blessed, Blessed as well, so that's a good a good score there, and a good name also. Um, Timberland's five, I think you peaked on the fridge round, words I never thought I'd say <laughs> ever in my life. Peaked in the fridge round. <laughs> anyway, that made me chuckle. Let's move on to the picture round answers. Are you all ready for these? Yeah, are you all ready? So this is um, uh, the difficult, uh, difficult one that it was. So these were the 12. There were some quite hard ones in here, I, I have to admit. I'll go through each one by one and maybe explain how, how, how they all work. So number one was high temperature. So the example helped you out of this one as well. Um, high temperature, so uh, this was the two degrees up high. This one was waiting list. So there was there in a list with the point, arrow pointing at weight. This was weight in a list. Clever. And this was x-ray. So you've got a stingray there of an X in it. This is x-ray. Doctor in the house. Is there a doctor in the house? So the PhD for doctor in the middle of the word house, either side of it, H O U N S E spells house. That's doctor in the house. Number five was chicken pox. So the word chick is placed inside the word pox. Yeah, you see that one now? See, when you get when you see it, you kick yourself a bit, don't you? I like that one. Feeling under the weather. So the word touch is a feeling and it's under the weather above. Feeling under the weather. This one, the one, the band who in the age 92 equals bandage. It's a band and age, bandage. Yep, now we'll get that one. Number eight, this might be one of the best ones here. This is, what's the C? What's the C rising slightly higher? Why is the C emerging? Because it's an emergency. It's an emerging C. It's an emergency. Okay, who got that one? Okay, this one now I think might be the hardest one. Oh, what's that all about? This is painless operation. 
So the word there spells out operation, but it's missing the word pain. So the word pain has been taken out of operation to leave us with O or two, and therefore it's a painless operation. Yeah, see? Yeah, maybe these were, yeah, that was a fun one. Okay, this one, maybe you got this one right. So we've got the word aid listed three times and the point to the top is first aid. Did you get that one? Maybe the last one's hard, but did you get this one? Okay, and number 11, we've got a gap in the middle of the word wife. It's a midwife, it's the midway point, it's a midwife. And number 12, maybe this one was the trickier one as well. Elizabeth, Victoria, Mary, oh, all names of queens. They were all sat inside a square. This is, of course, the Queen's Square, which is what we're here for today to help fund the amazing work that the National Brain Pool do at the hospitals in the Queen's Square. That's another segue into uh, the National Brain Pool uh, ask at the end. So how did you all do? How did you all get on? Do I'll give you a few minutes to add up your scores. Please do, please do post your names and your scores in the, in the, in the chat because what we'll do is anyone who posts their names and scores in, we will put a little leaderboard together and put it out on social media um, as soon as we can. Obviously, we would have given a prize for the winners, but um, we are trusting you all to, to, to judge your own scores. So there would have been controversy with the prizes for that. But there will be uh, kudos and there will be uh, bragging rights. There will be kind of fame with your names on the top. So it was all worth playing for that. So do put your uh, round scores in, put your total scores in with your team there next to it, and we will um, add them all up uh, at the end for you. Um, okay, how are we looking on these questions? Okay, I've seen some uh, some questions in some Dingback ones, and oh, C's up wasn't quite right, Rick. Um, we put heat stroke for the Hong Kong, good, good guess. Oh, well done for a wonderful quiz. Thank you, Caroline Church, thank you. Oh, nine out of 12, uh, Caroline, and that's good too. Uh, another nine out of 12, we, 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 oh, people are scoring well, nine out of 12 is coming through, the Dingbats have done Done very well here. We're getting some good scores in. Eight, 10 out of 12 for Catherine Breaker for the Timberlands. Doctor in the house or in the house doctor. Ah, oh, yeah, I'll let you have either of those. We were well behaved. Um, it was good. Uh, thought the, yeah, I'll let you have it. I'll let you have it, Catherine. You did so well. Um, thought the C1 uh, is in six section. Okay. Uh, we've got, oh, we've got a broad box total of 28.5. Rick got 10 out of 12 for the memory in the last one. I've got 9 out of 12. Oh, we've got 29 and a half total score. I can see that one coming in. Oh, 32.5 for Pete's Dragon. That's an impressive score there. Oh, but it's pipped so it's pipped by Funky Ray UK. The donuts are getting 33. Oh, this is this is good. It's exciting. I'm reading all these scores as they come in live um, for me. So that is exciting. Um, um, but um, the thing we're going to, um, to do now is we're going to look at the prize. So those who entered all the um who entered the brain competition and uh, submitted your entries up to load thank you very much thank you so much for submitting those uh, i hope you had fun doing them uh, the team have picked a winner uh, i'm going to go over to now and hopefully if technology works we'll see that winner. i did want you to start it might not always work we're in a sound problem but i'm confident this one's going to work we're going to have the winning uh, entry up on screen now with the name so the winner of the hundred pound grind voucher um is really the drum roll again, everyone, everyone do it together, everyone do this drum roll. The winner is, the winner is Blackburn Hotspots with their great, oh look at this, this is great. You've got all the veg and fruit here with all the little, um, oh it's all diagrammed out as well, explain each section's where the frontal cortex are. That is a very creative effort and a well thought through and explained one too. That seems, I think there's some clever people on that team who've been able to do that one. And also, I mean, I, kudos as well for going and getting this fruit out and peeling very bits. So that is uh, is our winner. I'm sure you will agree it's a worthy a worthy winner. Um, the uh, the team will be in touch with you via your channel to um, to let you know how you can win uh, claim your prize. But thank you very much um, for everyone who who did that. We are coming towards the, the very very end now. So this is uh, a last chance to to. Um, uh, nation, but thank you so much for everyone who's donated so far. It, it really does does mean mean a lot uh, and it makes a massive difference. So I really do hope you've enjoyed uh, the quiz. I hope you've had so much fun. Uh, I've had loads of fun. It's been great um, doing this for you. Talking to myself for uh, an hour and a half has has suited me right down to a T, to be honest. Uh, but I've been kept in company with all your uh, chats and messages, so I appreciate you uh, keeping me company through all that as well. Now, I can't really say thank you and do it justice properly, so I am going to leave the kind of final word um, with the uh, Teresa, who's the Chief Executive of National Brain Appeal, uh, to say it slightly better than I can. And I think, across the sound works for this as well. I'm Teresa Jauncey, Chief Executive of the National Brain Appeal. On behalf of the National Brain Appeal, 
Thank you so much for taking part in tonight's quiz. I hope you enjoyed it and got lots of questions right. Thank you also for any donations you've made towards our fund. We are truly grateful. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you again. Yes, thank you so much for everyone's done it. I'm seeing the people saying it was super fun. People enjoy the creativity as well. Um, people enjoy the evening too. So I do hope you've had uh, a good fun time. Um, that's what it's all about. It's difficult times for everyone at the moment. So it's great that we can all come together and uh, enjoy evenings like this too. Um, so I do hope you have fun. Thank you again from, from me. Please do donate. The donation still will, will be up. The link will always be in the um, in the description here. You know, this is live, but it's going to stay up, the link, so you can watch it again. Maybe, and don't tell people this because it will give it away at the end, you can watch it again with a friend and do the quiz with someone else and they won't know that you've seen it before and know the answers. So do, do the quiz again and challenge your friend to do it. You can send this link around to other people, maybe get other people to donate. Do spread the word as well because uh, that really does make a difference. The more people who know the great things that your brain people are doing will, uh, will help in, in the long run. So thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you for the National Brain Appeal team as well, the whole wider team, people who have helped put this quiz together. Um, I do a big thank you to everyone. And uh, I really do hope you enjoyed yourself. So congratulations again to our winners. Um, well done to everyone who's uh, taken part. I do hear we are up to um, j uh, just over 12,000, 12,049 to be more precise uh, when I've last seen. So thank you so much for those donations. That really will make a difference. And please do keep donating. Um, I will leave you a donation link below. So please do donating. Thanks again. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.